Mike, Andy, podcast 100, three digits, the double bullseye, a centurion episode, the big one. This is podcast 100, the 100th episode of what was the Landlord page podcast, but is now the Investor's Corner. So first of all, congratulations on getting there. Yeah, well done. Well done, everyone. Well, well done. done, us. Round yeah. of applause. <laughs> if you're listening, that was a champagne bottle. If you're watching, you see it as just sound effects. But um, amazing, really. All round, Mike. Yeah, we've had a lot of really good guests on. A lot of horrendous cuts of hitting <laughs> the virtual floor, I think, around Martin's desk as well. But it's been a lot of fun and uh, we've met a lot of good people along the way, haven't we? Yeah, absolutely. You know how many guests we've had, Andy. I do. I was waiting for that. Wow. Yeah. Stats. Seamless. It's We're almost like we've get... done 100 podcasts. Yeah. <laughs> ready to get stuck in with the stats. So, first episode. Any ideas? Well, I know because I helped you well, find yeah. the data. But Mike, ask Mike. First guest. First episode dropped. When was it? When, when was, was it? it? Uh, I'm going to say it was August 2021. Oh, close. September 2021. We probably recorded it in August. I'll yeah. take the point. <laughs> we've got it was the 30th, so... 30th, yeah. It's not bad. It's yes. not bad. So, yeah, 30th September 2021, our first That's episode birthday. dropped. Was that yeah. my birthday? Time? Oh, there you go. Happy birthday. Yeah. I don't think we sang on it, but right. it was a good one. Um, first guess, Mike, putting you on the spot again. Who do you think? Oh, I actually guessed this right, to be fair. Yeah, you did. Akil Mayer. Oh, well it done. Was. Absolutely. Those two points. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. The brrr no. episode. The brrr. Brr. Yes, yeah. the B... R R R R. He for a few extra R's on it, but yeah. Can you remember what all the answers are? Remember? Buy, refurbish, refinance, rent, 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 refinance, repeat, repeat. That was the extra R. There you go, nailed. So yeah, first, first guess a kill from our mortgage broker, where yeah we discussed the. Brrr. How many we had, guests? We had a kill on three times actually. He's been a really He's good a regular. Guest. Yeah, yeah. It's so a shout out to Akil from Alma yeah, well, Broker. Thank yeah. you, Akil. Um, expert guess. How many? How many? How many? Out of 100. 57. No. Oh. You looked to me <laughs> like I hit that as well. No. It gave me hope. 71 oh. expert guests in total. As a percentage? Is that 71 episodes with guests or 57 different guests? 71, 71 episode, episodes, episodes with, with guests. guests. All right, we've done 57 guests. As a percentage, how many is that? What, 71? Of 100? Well, <laughs> 71. <laughs> <laughs> Come to the numbers, guys. Who is it? So we've won out. I nearly had him, though. He's yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah. no, he's put me on the spot. Really, I'm I'm like, a, where's my Casio MX-85 when I need it? it? Um, so... Stats then, so episode downloads, we've had over 16,500 downloads in total. Heading Whilst towards 20,000, yeah. Heading towards 20,000. We're now hitting 1,500 downloads a month. And that's just audio, right? Just audio. And then we've got, on YouTube and video watches, we're looking at about over 100,000 watches now on social media. Thanks for watching and listening. Yeah, so yeah, pretty awesome. Big shout pretty out to awesome. Thank you. And... Review stats then. So looking at our reviews on the podcast, we're sort of five stars all the way. Nice. Really. So just wanted to... Out of how many stars? Out of five. Good. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> five out of five. There you go. Um, so just want to read some of those some of those reviews out. So I've got one here that says, I listen to a lot of podcasts and it's good to have something refreshing and a challenger brand doing something different. Keep it up, guys. Nice. Thanks, mum. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Another one, there are a lot of property shows available to listen to, but many of them are putting the marketing agenda first. This means their content is skewed, not this one. Their only purpose is to keep their listeners informed with honest insight and inspiration. I love that one because that is why we made the podcast. That was the mission, wasn't yeah. it? And in a minute, we're going to talk about our favorite guests, our favorite episodes and stuff like that. But that as a review, yeah, you know, that, shows that we're that doing something it. right. Absolutely love that. So yeah, and the last one I've got is great content and information for investors. They cover a wide range of areas from buy to let to bridge finance. Definitely recommends listening to their podcast. So great reviews there. We're obviously doing something right. So uh, yeah, we'll continue to keep continue it up to do that. If you've listened to all episodes and you haven't left us a re review, please do. Yeah. If you've listened to every episode, drop us a note and we'll send you something. Yeah. 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 And we'll get you on. Yeah. We'll get you on. We're going to test them though. Yes. On the episodes. Before they get the prize. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. 
Love that. What was the best guest for you, Mike? Best guest. Yeah. What was your, what was your best guest and why? My number one uh, is a repeat guest again. Is Liam Connolly from Robry Morris Solicitors? Uh, I think we've had him on three times now, and he's talked about rented reform twice, and I think he talked about eviction once when we were going through COVID and eviction rules were absolutely skewed. You couldn't get an eviction for love or money. It's taking something like nine months. Um, Liam comes in. MacBook in hand, suited and booted as if he's about to walk <laughs> into court yep. to give someone the absolute facts and truths. And he spent time reading the entire renters reform bill from cover to cover, taking notes, putting it in, in human layman's form yeah. to then regurgitate for everyone to listen to. So we didn't have to do that hard yards for him out of the goodness of his heart and dispelled a huge amount of it into just saying, well, it's literally just a change of circumstances and a change of writing, change of write up. There's nothing in this to worry about, whereas the press are going wild. So I thought he was the best guest for me because just the pure information that he gave people and the way he gave it was just totally disarming for the the other mainstream medias. I was worried, if I'm honest, hosting that one when he walked in. I thought, <laughs> I, I am a bit out of my depth here. <laughs> but he just explained it so well that me and him were having a really good conversation that related to a lot of people that are listening, my own personal situation, and he just made it really clear. And that was only a couple of weeks back. So if you haven't listened to that one, scroll back, Liam Colony, Robert Morris, check it out, Renters Reform Bill absolute class act of an episode that one was really good what about you andy so i think my mine would have been lee curtis when we were talking about land planning and, and the way that he went into detail about how to value land so i always remember him going a third a third a third yeah so it used to be a third land value third building costs and then a third profit, profit. yeah and and he was talking about Really, that's how, how you used to base it on. But because costs have increased by 50 or 60% now, it's sort of hard to hard to value it. And when we were talking about delays in, in planning applications and sort of the big boy developers coming in and sort of putting the small developers to, to one side and holding onto this, onto this land, I just thought that the information that he was providing yeah. on a topic that, people don't really seem to talk about a lot on how that all works it's for me it gave it gave me insight to to how it works and i sort of took information from that um and so yeah built up my knowledge on yeah. on it spoke about planning a lot didn't we and mm. i think that there is a lot of people that i talk to in the trades that have got this kind of goal to do a couple of refurbs and then get into building get into mm. new build you know kind of building two for one that type of stuff and I think if you are one of those people, it's, it's a goal that you've got in the future, listen to that episode because it will help shape your cash flow you need to to get to there and your knowledge around how to source that type of product. If at all, that's what you want. Mm. By product, I mean, obviously, the land. So, yeah, yeah interesting episode. I I really like the Karen Chapman episode. You know, slightly different. We, we had Karen on as an interior designer. She She owns her own company. She's done it for many, many years. But I just felt there was so much value in that episode for people to look at things outside of balance sheets and litigation and legislation and just sharing knowledge bombs in different segments to actually just talk about that if you're a landlord and you want to maximize your rent or you want to start creating the interior of a property or the thought behind a property that's going to make your tenant feel homely, Maybe in a long-winded way, it will help with void periods and stuff like that, but it's not so much an issue at the moment, but just a different outlook on how to think about things. It was a great episode. She shared loads of little golden nuggets and tips um, quite some months ago, that one now. I think it was early part of the year if you're looking for it, but Karen Chapman, really, really good episode. What was your number one personal takeaway, Mike? What was the one thing that I mean, we've been privileged, right? Because we're sitting on here, yeah. you know, getting a lot of information, aren't we? We just invite people in that we want to know things from. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and just assume everyone else will does Yeah, too. I mean, if we if we want to know, then hopefully someone else does too. And that's some genuinely, jokes aside, that's how we book guests. So yeah. just a reminder to people who do listen, if you want to know how something works, then mm. 
just prod us and we'll try and book a guest that suits you because if you're thinking it chances are someone else's mm. um personal takeaway is i think it's last week's episode with nelly um so it's fresh in the mind about how to split your income into what should be your day-to-day costs of housing yourself and keeping your family having a, an allowance almost for for fun money and, and an allowance for for saving it's a very basic principle mm. but it's something that i reckon only a tiny percentage of people live by and i went home and i started googling it and looking at this that and the other and you read the percentage of harvard graduates that set a target is only about three percent out of a graduating class in the top university in the world but that three percent owns something like 97 percent of the wealth of their entire class so it says if you set a target if you set a goal if you set a business plan Mm -hmm. you might not always reach it but you're going to go way faster than way further than anyone who never does any of it yeah um which just rang true to me yeah and i think with business and how we've grown you know the company that we've grown we were very strong and clear on what our targets were what our objectives were and we went out and we hit them but sometimes you put your own personal life and that aspect of it fitness goals or you know goals that you've got to go on holiday with the the missus or whatever it may be weddings and stuff like that big milestone birthdays of course you have those and you have your goals and aspirations but that day-to-day thought process of am I investing 10, 15, 20% of my income on a monthly basis to allow it to compound? That was very interesting to hear her talk about that. And we've we've really wanted to get a proper IFA on the show for quite some time. Mm. So it was great to have that episode, last week's episode. And it was was really similar to a Diary of a CEO episode recently. Yeah. Where um, they said, they, they talked about exactly the same thing and why you don't even have to own a house. To, because people in the UK obviously presume that it's it's the key to wealth is owning property. It doesn't have to be. You can do it in a number of different ways. It's just about how how you plug it into your lifestyle. Not forget to spend some money on yourself occasionally, which um, yeah, which our accountant reminded us of after after our second year in business. So, yeah. I think if I went back twenty years to which was roughly when I bought my first house probably more like 18, 19. But if I went back that amount of years and I then had the option to either buy my own residential house or buy a buy to let at that time, at the time I bought my own house to live in. But I think knowing what I know now, Mm. I would have started with two or three buy to lets Mm. before I'd gone and committed to my own residential. And I think that's something we can pass on to the younger generation, you know, our kids and things like that, because I think that's the way to do it when you look at that aspect of it. 100%, yeah, the lesser known first time buyer, buyer to let. Yeah, yeah. I mean, on that point, it's relevant to my favourite guest, actually. Um, We've had him on twice, Peter Laverdos from Action Coach, Business Coach, been in agency before, a landlord, uh, obviously a wealth of knowledge when it comes to coaching businesses. I always love any conversation I have with, with Peter. And on the episode, it was a real eye-opener for me because in the same way, he was talking about your your investments, you know, your your buy-to-lets and your other investments. Do you have those set up in a profit and loss strict setup, be it Excel or another program, like you do for your business? You know, we're, we're quite strict on our profit and loss sheet. We review it quite frequently. We make sure that we're getting good ROI and returns on things. We know what the goal is. We know what the cash flow sits at. We know our cash flow targets sit at within the business but from a buy to let point of view from an investing point of view no just let it go in and out of the bank account on hsbc did i get rent yes did i not chase it you know that's as simple as i went so actually re re looking at that going home setting up my my costs my profit making sure that it's cash flow and how i want it to and allowing me to achieve the goal that i initially set for that particular uh, buy to let and and portfolio of investments was really really important for me on that particular episode so i love that takeaway you'll find pete on there a couple of times but yeah peter laverdas action coach check it out it'll really get you thinking even if you haven't got a portfolio yet it will set you up right it will set the foundations up for doing it right mm. what about you andy for me it has to be jamie shepherd episode will writer um it's probably something that hasn't even entered into my mind about having a will Mm. 
Because when you're young, you don't really think about, right, at the end of it, what do I need to set up? Where's my assets going, et cetera, et cetera. And we all know there's something, you know, something could happen to us tomorrow, in a week's time, a couple of years' time, touch wood. Hopefully not. This isn't wood. Yeah. <laughs> Get over <laughs> yourself. Um, but yeah, it was just that that episode really sort of honed in on me to, right, I need to get everything set for my family in case of the worst of the worst outcome. Yeah. You know, with my assets, um, my, my investments, all of that sort of stuff, it, it, it wasn't going to going to anywhere. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Jamie, J Jamie's episodes and the, with the information that he provided just sort of nudged me into, right, let's get everything set. Let's get everything put into place, ready for, when that moment happens that I'm no longer here, then it's all it's a hard, He's a hard combo to have, but it's so relevant. I mean, protecting yeah. your loved ones is effectively his tagline for Soteria Planning. Mm. And I think that that kind of dictates it really well as we're talking about how to make it work, the knowledge you need to make it work, what the goals are, what the mm. plans are, how do you cash flow it, you know, what your outcomes, little extra knowledge plugins, how to secure yourself with legislation changes, you know, from Liam. But then at the core of it is, are you looking after your kids and your family yeah. and your friends and the people that are going to um, be rewarded with all of your life's hard work when life mm. comes to an end? So, you know, great, great episode. He's been on twice and, and both times, you know, talking about um, celebrities that have passed away without wills and, yeah. and what's happened there and celebrities that have passed away with trusts in place and how they've managed to mitigate all tax for, for multi-million yeah. pound portfolios is, is a is a cracking episode. And then I think just, just on the will side of things, it's, you know, getting a proper will in place might seem costly to some people because some people do it online and, you know, get it for 50 quid or yeah. something like that. But actually, when you speak to a professional will writer that does it, does it day in, day out, and he starts explaining some of the things that could happen if it's not set up correctly... It's definitely worth the money to to speak to a professional and get a proper one. How, proper much, did one he, how much did he pay you for that? Because you just sold the best sales pitch of that. <laughs> I've never Nothing, heard. It. I've, I've not heard him sell it as well. Him. Actually, I've just plugged it. Affiliate marketing one hundred and one <laughs> by Andy Brown. Uh, love that. M my my favourite piece of education, like all around knowledge, as a, of an episode. We had Ryan Power, strong name from Pattinson's auctions and actually just hearing about modern auctions and taking the stigma away from those kind of dodgy conference rooms with the old kind of you know hammer going down loads of loads of guys in suits and just a bit of a weird environment um moving that out the way and looking at it as a, a modern based auction maximizing the amount of awareness that can go to that property the simplicity of how it operates as well I just found that a really insightful podcast to get to know a different way that I think a lot of landlords maybe in the future will capitalize on, in particular ones that have got tenants in situ or lease related issues. And they actually think, do you know what? 10, 15 grand less for the convenience of a hammer going down, it exchanging and completing in 28 days, rather than going for a 12 month rigmarole of finding a buyer, losing a buyer, tenant moving out, void period, then the buyer pulls out, then I've got a vacant property. I just think the more landlords that exit will start to shift and actually go, I don't even pay a fee for this, for starters. The buyer pays the fee. I can take the hit on the asking price and I can just move on with my next goal. So if you, if you want to release equity from a property by selling it very quickly, then that seems like a really good method and way to do it that you can instantly do it, which as an estate agent goes against the grain mm. because I'd be like, no, put it on maximum price, hold for it, get good people in place and, and achieve the best price that you can, which I, I've always liked to think I've done with every property I've ever sold, whereas this goes against the idea. So I thought that was a really, really good takeaway um, for everyone just to see a different option, really. Mm. What about you, Mike? I'm going to take a slightly different tact. I want to go back to the episode we did with Ricky Veal, who is an estate agent in Stevenage. And it's one particular thing he said, which stuck with me and we we said what would be your ideal buy to let in stevenage and most people we have on kind of toe the line and say yeah family three bed semi blah 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 and it's it's nice but it's, it's quite vague ricky went down to say in these specific roads 
you can buy an end terrace property which has a plot on the side where you can knock through the side add a side door split it into two maze net build on the side and add value the minute you've bought it so it goes back to a kills acronyms with build yeah exactly but it was it was it was very very special because if you if you find the right estate agent and say i want to buy a buy to let what do you think i should do they're going to lead you to these specific properties help you source that specific property and show you how to add value yeah without it ever costing you a penny yeah. it's just free 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 because they're just looking to sell that looking and they'll take the commission from the from the seller so it wasn't a specific episode but it was a specific moment in that episode which reminded me a quality local estate agent if you ask the right questions yeah will give you diamonds and gold and pearls that you just never even knew that existed. Yeah, it makes total sense because we're all sat in now thinking, picturing that property in our head, thinking, yeah. mm. I'd buy one of those. Yeah. I don't even know what it is. Or no, what never been there. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. That makes sense to me. I'm in. I know Ricky owns one, though. There we go. There you go. <laughs> Obviously work for him. Yeah. yeah, I love that episode with Ricky because he's passionate about it, isn't he? And he's knowledgeable. Yeah. And those are the people that you want to surround yourself by. Yeah. Because you know that you're going to get looked after. Yeah. And you're going to get put, pointed in the right direction. Yeah. Great episode from Ricky, that one. Uh, shout out to Ricky in Stevenage. What about yourself, Andy? Best piece of educational knowledge? Mine has to be um, Diane Blagg from um, Styles & Co. Reason being is, is because from an accountant perspective, when she was going on about the do's and don'ts and personal versus incorporation, um, how to plan future for landlords and HMRC, bringing all of that knowledge to the table and that and that discussion is just an eye opener. Um, and it provides that information for landlords on potentially how to save thousands of pounds. Yes. Um, so yeah, that I t took a lot of knowledge from that and I can pass that on to landlords that I speak to. Yeah. Because some landlords don't really know the ins and outs of of what they can do tax wise so to be able to pass that knowledge on to our clients it's it's golden everyone's got a personal situation circumstance but getting people like nelly on that you're talking about as an ifa getting the accountant on mm. getting liam on these are people where they can't talk to you as an individual and really offer the true bespoke advice that someone may need but for them to come on camera out of their comfort zone and share that general knowledge with people for us we're privileged like i say to absorb the knowledge listen to it and, and have those conversations but it's exactly the reason why we made this podcast 100 episodes later so i think yeah shout out to the the 50 odd guests the 71 episodes where we had guests on the people that have come on multiple times shout out to the guests because they've shared some absolute pearls of wisdom mm. and you know if you haven't if you haven't listened to all the episodes and you're kind of lost and you're looking for a little bit of inspiration, flick back through some of the older ones because most of them are timeless. You know, yeah. the mortgage advisors may be slightly different that we've had on. We've had some great brokers on um, and they might be conversations that are relevant to chronologically. But typically speaking, most of those are timeless episodes that you can just get some great advice. That's and, just uh, knowledge bombs all around, isn't there, on those yeah. on those episodes? Favourite episode to, to make, like for fun reasons? favorite episode to make what was the one when me and you just got the giggles and we just we just kept taking oh yeah mike was getting frustrated <laughs> i don't even know what we were talking about yeah what was that i one? think we were I literally trying to record a one and a half minute yeah intro. oh that was the intro it. exit for one for one was, of them wasn't it um remember to subscribe why, why yeah we rebranded to yeah. investors court oh yeah it was the intro so it's supposed to be a minute long it turned into half an hour Awful. and 28 minutes of just giggling mike just sitting there with Awful. uh yeah. Stern. I felt like Roy Keane between <laughs> Daniel Sturridge and Micah Richards, <laughs> frankly. I mean, I had a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, I had a good. lot of fun. I think uh, we've had some great, we've had some great funs, uh, fun ones to make. The one we did with Pooja was great because at the end we were talking about like worst case scenarios or like most awkward situations, and we all shared our story of like the most awkward situation. That was quite a lot of fun. Yeah. You know, there's some embarrassing stories at the end of that <laughs> podcast that people want to check out. I love making the story one as well with the guys from 
um, care and what they were doing with kind of with kids in care and how they were using that from an investing point of view. That may still be our most downloaded episode. It actually. is. Yeah. 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 The story yeah. ones. That's a really interesting one. Fun one, Mike. I mean, you're normally like. I am the pinnacle of fun. Is, <laughs> yeah. is that what we were going to go to? Yeah. I, you're normally I, I straight on for the fun yeah. and spreadsheets. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, it's it's always enjoyable to record them because we walk away learning something that we that we didn't know before. The I think the genuinely the most fun ones are the ones where the first two minutes are just super awkward. Yeah, because mm. you can't get a conversation going but then by the end you look up at the you look up at the recording and you're at 58 minutes and you decide you have to break it into two episodes yeah those are the those are the best ones but the most fun in all honesty the most fun we ever had was when we sat and ripped apart what is a letting agent's terms and conditions that was just <laughs> it was just it was like so you you were in your element then, oh it was it, it was like... just an hour of therapy <laughs> wasn't it it was it was just everything that had, that had ever been pushed onto you as a, as a manager i'll tell you what was quite fun that people wouldn't realize listening or watching and and shout out to him as well because obviously he was he was uh one of the initial people to come on but tristan we would often sit in an episode with a guest and tristan would zone out very easily the, the guy doesn't sleep much i don't think he'd zone out very easily and then i'd come to him and say what do you think tristan and he'd go Sorry, I don't. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what anyone was talking about. Could we do that bit again? <laughs> Mike used to absolutely hit the floor with it. It was so funny. Um, but yeah, so there we go. The Centurion episode, one hundred. I don't know how many podcasts get to a hundred episodes. It must be a small percentage. Um, so congratulations to us for doing it, and thank you so much for everyone that's listened and watched because it's given us the motivation to keep doing it yeah we do Absolutely. put a lot of time and energy into getting guests having questions for guests obviously editing it getting it uploaded onto all of the different platforms sharing the little bite-sized clips there's hours of time that goes into e each episode so thank you to the reviews to the people that have subscribed to the people that watch if you want certain guests on in the second centurion let us know, drop it in the comments and we will uh, do our best to source those. I've still got a hit list of 10 people or 10 types of profiles of people that I want to get on. So uh, yeah, gents, here's to uh, 200 episodes coming your way soon. Nice. Woohoo. Let's hear that. Why have we made the Investors Corner podcast, Ian? I think online at the moment, there is just way too much noise, waffle and nonsense. Everyone's got an agenda. So the goal was to make a podcast for people that want to invest money in property or other areas where there's no waffle, there's no nonsense, there's no agenda. It's opinion led, but it's an honest opinion. And it might not be the right answer, but we're gonna share it. So on the podcast, we're gonna supply people with access to mortgage brokers, financial advisors, planning experts, development consultants, everything around the property industry and the wider fields. Yeah, so if you're looking at investing in the future, you know that just having an income from your employer or from your business is not enough to give you the life that you want down the line. We're gonna hopefully give you some of those answers that will give you the solutions you need for the future. So please hit the subscribe button. The more subscribers we get, the better guests that we can get on and the more people that we can reach. So hit subscribe.